Hello. Today we would like to introduce you to the topic of adequate cuff pressure management, which is an important part of tube management altogether. HPLV cuffs are used for both tracheostomy tubes and endotracheal tubes. In this video, we show you the handling of cuff tracheostomy tubes with HVLP cuffs. HVLP means high volume, low pressure. High volume, therefore a large contact surface, at low pressure. The cuff is a balloon at the distal end of the tracheostomy tube, which is usually filled with air through a cuff supply line. A valve on the pilot balloon makes it possible to fill the cuff and build up pressure inside the cuff. In a filled state, the cuff material provides a seal against the tracheal wall and thus separates the lower from the upper respiratory tract. There are two main indications that require a cuff tracheostomy tube. Ventilation on the one hand and aspiration prevention on the other. For ventilation, the trachea is sealed by the inflated cuff below the larynx and the air is directed through the tube into the lungs. The flow of air from the lungs past the cannula into the upper airway is prevented. This maintains a certain pressure in the lungs that is required for ventilation. The so-called PEEP, among other things, ensures that the alveoli are dilated sufficiently for gas exchange. Aspiration is understood as the flow of, for instance, saliva, fluid, or food into the respiratory tract due to inadequate protective reflexes. This may happen because of disturbed swallowing function, uh, also known as dysphagia, or an insufficiency of the coughing reflexes. As a result, secretion or other fluids find their way into the lower respiratory tract and may trigger an infection. The blocked cuff protects the lower respiratory tract. However, a 100% seal is not possible due to the wrinkling effect of the cuff material. Secretions and fluids can enter the lungs within minutes. The so-called microaspiration can lead to pneumonia and thus endanger the patients. Therefore, when choosing the adequate size of the tracheostomy tube, it is important to take under consideration that the cuff has enough space to unfold. If the pressure in the cuff is too low, the cuff will not create a sufficient enough seal against the tracheal wall. Contaminated fluid or secretion may seep into the lungs unhindered. Especially in association with ventilation, pneumonia represents a significant threat to the patient. Good cuff pressure management is therefore essential to its prevention. If the cuff pressure is too high, however, there is a risk of damaging the tracheal mucosa as the cuff presses against the tracheal wall with too much pressure. The capillary perfusion pressure, this means the blood pressure in the tracheal mucosa, is about 40 millibar. The cuff pressure should be significantly lower. The consequence of high cuff pressure for any extended period of time can be, for example, irritation, swelling, stenosis, even necrosis, or even tracheomalacia, the dissolving of the cartilages. With a cuff pressure between 20 and 30 millibar, the risk of pressure damage is reduced to a minimum. There are several possibilities. Most often the cuff pressure is checked and adjusted using a cuff pressure monitor or otherwise known as manometer. The cuff pressure measurement should be executed and documented at least once per shift or better every four hours. How the pressure changes between the measurements cannot be monitored using this method. For example, changes in air pressure can also cause fluctuations in the cuff pressure. In addition, the cuff pressure should be checked after changing the patient's position. The requirements of the in-house standards and protocols must be followed in any case. The Traco Smart Cuff Manager consistently monitors and regulates the cuff pressure 
to the recommended range between 20 and 30 millibar. Setting new standards for the safety of your patient. It receives feedback from the cuff and equalizes pressure peaks, which can occur, for example, by repositioning the patient. The risk of damaging cuff pressure fluctuations and pressure peaks using the Smart Cuff Manager is greatly reduced. On our website, you will find more information and a product video for the Traco Smart Cuff Manager. Electronic devices for permanent cuff pressure control are also available. The, ca the cuff may also be filled with a syringe for short periods of time. However, the pressure must be readjusted with a cuff pressure monitor shortly thereafter. The sensing or feeling of the correct cuff pressure via the pilot balloon is not possible and should absolutely be replaced by a correct measurement. A cuff is generally deflated using a syringe to ensure complete emptying of the cuff. The valve of the pilot balloon on the cuff's air supply line is firmly connected to the cuff pressure monitor. This makes the current pressure of the cuff visible. The desired pressure for the patient can now be adjusted. In most cases, the correct cuff pressure is between 20 and 30 millibar. This area is clearly marked in green on the scale of the manometer. Please remember that each time when you attach the manometer to the pilot balloon, some air escapes into the pressure chamber of the manometer, causing the cuff pressure to drop. Please also refer to the instructions for use of the respective products. We hope that with this video we could emphasize how important a good cuff pressure management is. Thank you and have a nice day.